Hello, welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 43 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about the different types of triggers that are available in SQL Server. In SQL Server, there are three types of triggers, DML, DDL, and logon triggers. In this session, we'll talk about DML triggers. DDL and logon triggers, we will talk about them in a later session. DML stands for Data Manipulation Language. Insert, update, and delete statements are examples for DML statements because they modify the data that's present inside a table or a view. Now, DML triggers fire automatically in response to DML events. Okay, so since they are fired in response to an insert, update, or delete statement, and these statements can be classified as DML statements. These triggers are called as DML triggers. Okay. Now, DML triggers can again be classified into two types, after triggers instead of triggers. After triggers, you know, sometimes they're also called as for triggers. So for or after triggers in SQL Server means one and the same. Now, let's understand the difference between after triggers and instead of triggers. After triggers, as the name says, they fire after the triggering action. And the triggering action could be insert, update, and delete. So after triggers, they fire after an insert, update, or delete statement execution. Whereas instead of triggers, as the name says, they fire instead of the triggering action. For example, you know, when you try to insert a row into a table, instead of inserting that row into that table, you know, instead of trigger, if there is an instead of trigger, that gets fired. We will be talking about instead of triggers in a later session. In this session, we'll be talking about after triggers. Okay, so we have three types of triggers in SQL Server, DML, DDL, and logon triggers. And DML triggers are again classified into after triggers and instead of triggers. In this session, we'll be talking about after triggers. Okay. So let's understand these triggers with examples. Okay, so I have this table called TBL employee, which has got ID, name, salary, gender, and department ID columns. Now let's say, you know, from the previous slide, we have understood that, you know, after triggers, or again, in, within after triggers, we have after insert trigger, after update trigger, and after delete trigger, meaning immediately after an inst insert statement is executed, we want this trigger to be fired. In fact, triggers can be considered as a special kind of stored procedures that execute automatically in response to a triggering action. All right, so we have this table TBL employee with these columns. Now let's say whenever somebody inserts a row into this table, that could be directly using a SQL statement or through an application. So whenever somebody adds a new employee into this TBL employee table, I want some audit information to be captured automatically in this TBL audit table that you can see on the right hand side. This audit table has got ID and audit data columns. Now let's say for example, if I insert a new employee with ID is equal to eight and let's say whatever his name, salary, etc. So whenever I insert a new row into this TBL employee table, now, in the audit table, I want a message like this. New employee with ID is equal to eight is added at so-and-so date and time. Okay, so I want the ID of the person that you have just added and at what date and time you have added that employee. Okay, so I want to capture that information. So how can I do that? I mean, obviously we can make use of a stored procedure to do that, but the easiest way to achieve, you know, this is to basically associate a trigger with this TBL employee table. As soon as, you know, the insert statement is fired, you know, is executed on this TBL employee table, I want this trigger, after trigger, after insert trigger, to be fired, which will capture the ID of the record that you have inserted into this table, and then the date and time, and log that or insert another row into this TBL employee audit table. Let's look at that in action. You know, that would be much easier. Right, so here we have a trigger. Now, look at this. Whenever you're creating a trigger, you create a trigger for a table and for a specific event. Okay, now for this example, we want to create a trigger on this table TBL employee for insert event because as soon as a new row is inserted into TBL employee, we want to log, you know, the audit information. 
So that's why we create the trigger on TBL employee table for insert action or event. You can see that here. So I'm creating a trigger, create trigger, trigger name. And a trigger name, you know, the naming convention is to use tr underscore. So tr underscore, the name of the table, and then for which action you are creating this trigger. Here we are creating a trigger for insert action on TBL employee for insert as begin and end. This is just like stored procedure, so as begin and end. So inside your trigger, you can implement whatever logic you want. Okay, so what we want here, we want to capture the ID of the employee that we have just inserted into TBL employee table. So let's declare a variable of type integer, so declare ID integer. And we are selecting the ID of the person. If you look at this, we are you know, we are saying select at ID is equal to ID from inserted table. So what is this inserted table? This is another confusion. Let's look at this in action. So we have these two tables, TBL employee and TBL employee audit. So if you look at this TBL employee, it has got some rows. And if you look at TBL employee audit, it doesn't have anything. So now when I insert a new employee into this TBL employee table, we want to audit that information. And to do that, we are creating this trigger. So create trigger. Create trigger trigger name on this table for this action. Okay, as begin. So now, before we actually have any kind of logic, let's co let's comment that lines, and let's comment. Actually, let's comment everything in the trigger. So all I'm doing here is I'm saying select star from inserted table. Okay. So we are creating a trigger here on the employee table for insert action. And what is this trigger doing? This trigger is selecting all the columns and rows from a table called inserted. Okay, so in a bit we'll understand what this table is. So let's create this trigger first. So create trigger trigger name. So execute command completed successfully. So this trigger is created. So we created this trigger on TBL employee table. So go to TBL employee table, refresh triggers folder, expand that. You should see the trigger there. So now since this is created for insert action, so as soon as we execute an insert statement into TBL employee table. So let's execute this insert statement. What should happen? This trigger should fire. And what what are you telling this trigger to do? You are telling it to select all the rows and columns from inserted table. Let's look at what's going to be there in inserted and inserted table. I press F5. Look at what's happening. Okay. So when you executed insert into TBL values, you know you are actually inserting a row into this TBL employee table. When you did that, so this row with the ID is equal to eight that is inserted into TBL employee table, which is good. Okay, but then look at this, it has selected all the rows and columns. In the trigger you told, okay, select star from inserted. So it has selected that row from a table called inserted. Okay, and then let's actually do this. So so if you look at this, ID is equal to eight, name, Jane, salaries, so and so, and the gender is female. Now let's actually select from the employee table. So if you look at the employee table, it's exactly a copy of that row. So what is this inserted table? Where did this come from? Now, inserted table is a special table that is you know, used by triggers. And this table is only available in the context of a trigger. OK, now whenever you insert a row you know, into TBL employee or any other table for that matter, SQL Server maintains this magic table called inserted table, which retains a copy of the row that you have inserted into that table, into the actual table. Here, on the on clause, we specify TBL employee table. So when you insert a row into this TBL employee table, SQL Server behind the scenes creates a table called inserted in memory and a copy of the row that you have just inserted into this TBL employee will be maintained in this inserted table. And then this inserted table can be accessed inside the context of a trigger. Okay, And then you can inspect those values. If you want to roll back, you can roll back those changes. Or if you want to uh, you know, audit information, you can capture that. Okay, The reason why we have selected all the rows here is to just demonstrate to you guys you know, what how actually the inserted table looks like and if you and if you remember the inserted table 
you know structure was identical to to the structure of this TBL employee table. So two things to keep in mind, you know, the inserted table structure is identical to the structure of the table on the on clause here, in this case TBL employee. And this inserted table, it's a special table created by SQL Server for the purposes of triggers. So it's available only within the context of a trigger. If you try to access that outside the context of a trigger, you will get an error message. So let's try to access that. Select star from inserted, press F5, invalid object name, and that makes sense. Okay, because inserted table is a special table that's available only within the context of a trigger. All right, so so we know what is this inserted table. Now, let's understand the code here. So all we are doing here is we are creating a variable of type integer, and then we are saying, okay, select that, you know, into that variable the ID from inserted table, the value of the ID column from the inserted table. So obviously if you have inserted an employee uh, with ID is equal to 8 into TBL employee table, a copy of that row will be presented in, in present in inserted table. So we get the ID from there. And then finally what you're doing is, since we want to capture the audit information, we are saying insert it into TBL employee audit values. And if you look at the TBL employee audit table itself, it has just got two columns. One is the ID column, which is identity. So we don't have to supply a value for that. That will be automatically computed by SQL Server when you insert a new row into this table. And then the audit data itself. So audit data, what is that? We want a message, something like this. New employee with ID is equal to whatever is the ID is added at date and time. So this is static text, new employee with ID is equal to. And to that, using the plus sign, we are concatenating the ID that we have retrieved from the inserted table. And since ID is an integer um, you know, variable, we want to cast that to nvarchar if we have to concatenate that to the static text. And then we are saying, OK, new employee with ID is equal to 8 or 9 or 10, whatever, is added at so to this static text, again, we have to concatenate the current date and time. And we know to get the current and current date and time, we can use the uh, built-in getDate function and then cast that as nvarchar of 20. That's it. So let's create this. We already have this trigger, so we cannot create another trigger with the same name. So instead of create, alter, and then let's execute this command completed successfully. All right, so now let's try to insert another new record into this TBL employee table. Let's call this Jimmy and whatever, the rest of the columns. So we are trying to insert a row into this table. So obviously, you know, this is, this trigger is for insert on employee table. So immediately after a row is inserted into TBL employee table, this trigger gets fired. And we are saying in this trigger, insert an audit row into TBL employee audit table. So let's execute that. Look at this, one row affected, one row affected. This one got into TBL employee table. This one got into TBL employee audit table. Now let's select everything from TBL employee and TBL employee audit. And you should see in the audit information, new employee with ID is equal to nine is added at so-and-so date. Okay, so now let's look at a delete trigger, after delete trigger. Okay, so basically exactly the same thing. Now we have captured the audit information when we added a new employee to this table. Let's say if somebody deletes an employee, then we want to capture that information as well. And obviously, as you might expect, you know, there are only two changes that you have to do. Okay, one is, okay, so we are creating an after trigger for TBL employee table. So the name stays TR underscore TBL employee, but this one is for delete. So give it a meaningful name for delete on TBL employee table, but for delete action. Here we said it is for insert, but here it's for delete action as begin end and exactly same thing. The only thing that changes here is, look at this. In the ins insert trigger, we used inserted table. 
but here we are using deleted table. So what is this deleted table? Deleted table is again a special table used by SQL Server to keep a copy of the row that you have just deleted from the actual table. Again, the structure of the deleted table will be identical to the structure of the actual table from which you are deleting a row. So inserted row, inserted table is used by SQL Server to keep a copy of the row when you insert an, a new row into the table. And similarly, deleted table is used when you delete a row from the actual table. A copy of that row, copy of the deleted row will be maintained in this deleted table. So obviously from that deleted table, I'm retrieving the ID of the record that we have just deleted. And then we are building that string an existing employee with ID is equal to we are casting that ID to Enver care and we are using get date to get the date and concatenating that. Cool. So let's create this trigger now. Command completed successfully. So obviously if we go to the triggers folder refresh that we should see the new trigger that we have just created. So just by looking at the de name of these triggers, you can tell, okay, this trigger is for delete, this trigger is for insert. So that's the advantage of giving them meaningful names. So obviously now, if we go ahead and delete a row, look at this, we have so many rows from TBL employee. Now let's delete John's record, for example. So obviously, we execute the delete statement, delete from TBL employee where ID is equal to 1 press F5, so one row affected, this one is deleted from employee, and this one row affected is the row that got inserted into TBL employee audit table. So we should have the audit information captured there. So an existing employee, if you look at this, with ID is equal to one, is deleted at so and so date and time. So this, this, this is an, you know, after insert trigger, after delete trigger. Okay, they are very much identical except that here you specify for delete and here you say for insert. And in the after insert trigger, you make use of inserted table. In after delete trigger, you make use of deleted table. If it is an update, you make use of both inserted and updated tables. We'll talk about updating, you know, uh, capturing audit information when you update a row in our next video session. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.